In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the front brakes on this Dodge Grand Caravan. Let's get started. Take a 19 millimeter socket, remove all five of your lug nuts, and then remove the wheel. Now with a 21 millimeter socket, remove the two caliper bracket, two knuckle bolts. We're gonna take the whole caliper and bracket assembly off and set it aside. There's one. I'm gonna leave this partially threaded in so it'll hold the caliper while I take this one off. Now you can take this one out completely. Support the caliper, remove that initial bolt that you had out. Now you can pull it off of the rotor Depending on how stuck it is, you may or may not need a small pry bar to help you out. And now you don't want to let it hang on the brake hose, so I have a bungee cord ready to hold this on. I just hooked it onto the coil spring on the strut. Hang it up here. That way it puts no pressure on the brake hose. Make sure it's not going to fall off. That's secure. Now you can remove your rotor. If it's stuck on there, just use a hammer, tap between the lug studs. Don't damage the threads though, and it should come right off. I have some fresh grease on this hub, so I'm gonna wipe it off so I can inspect the hub surface. Mine looks great, but if yours was rusty, depending on the severity of the rust, you might either need to sand it down or just use a wire brush and lightly remove all the debris and rust buildup that is on it. So with this wiped down, I'm just gonna apply new grease. Once again, make sure your hub is very clean because if it's not, the rotor, the new rotor won't sit flush and then everything's gonna be offset from there on out. Add some anti-seize to your hub, especially right here in the center where the rotor touches the hub surface as well as on the outer part. I will also put some in the middle, but that is not as important. You just want to put a thin layer on. If you put too much, it'll actually start flinging everywhere as you drive, and you want to avoid that, of course. Now take your new rotor, slide it on. Optionally, you can put a lug nut on. That way it'll hold the rotor in place so it doesn't want to fall off. Don't tighten it tight, just snug it by hand. There you go, now that's on. Also, at this point, I'm going to wipe the surface of this rotor with brake parts cleaner. I want to remove any oils that are here from shipping. And I'm going to do the same on the back side by just soaking my rag and wiping it where the brake caliper would sit. There we go. Now with this bracket on the workbench, I'm going to pop off the anti-rattle clips. Now with these off, I'm going to spray it with a little bit of brake parts cleaner and then use a wire brush to get all of this corrosion off of here, all this rust built up. Now, you don't have to get it looking perfect and brand new, but you do have to clean it a little bit so that the new anti-rattle clips can sit on nice and flush. And you don't want this area swollen because rust will actually squeeze the pads and prevent them from moving smoothly. Add a thin layer of silicone paste or brake grease, whatever you have. If you do use silicone paste, make sure it's rated for brakes so that it can withstand higher temperatures. And the reason you just want a thin layer is because if you put too much and then you put the anti-rattle clips on, it actually will squeeze out all this grease. And if it gets in here, it will get onto your rotor. And that is not a good thing. Take your anti-rattle clips. And once you find the correct uh, side, you want to snap it on here. It'll, it'll clamp onto the bracket nice and tight. It should be flush with the bottom. You want to make sure that these little spring hooks are facing towards the outside. In here is where the rotor rides. So if you put them this way, well, the caliper bracket won't go on. Okay, once you have these pressed down nice and tight, let's do the same to the other side. So now we can move on to the slider pins. Take these out. Hopefully yours aren't seized. Sometimes that happens. Keep in mind that one of them will have a little rubber bushing on it. Try to keep them separate. I like to do these one at a time so that they can go back in the bore that they came out of. On this little ridge here, you're gonna to wanna to clean this out with a wire brush so that it can seal up on the boot nicely. If there's rust and debris in there, well, it's not going to. Water will make its way in and it'll continue rusting just like this. So you wanna make sure 
You get as much of that out of there as you can. Doesn't have to look perfect, but make it cleaner. I'm gonna wipe the rest of it. Then I'm gonna also wipe inside this boot here, try to get some of the old grease out as well as the rust that this is uh, built up. And now I'm gonna take some fresh grease. I'm using that silicone paste I used earlier. I'm gonna put it inside the boot and work it into these folds here. That's gonna act as a reserve of grease. Then I'm also gonna take some more and put it on the slider. Make sure you coat all of it and then put some at the top right on this ridge. Now there is already some on the boot, so it'll get on there, but I like to coat everything. Then slide this in just like that. And you'll notice that there's some air behind it. Press it on and squeeze the boot. That'll squeeze all the excess air out. That's done. So let's do the same to the other side. There we go. Wipe off any excess grease. Give it a couple twists. And this is now ready to be put back on the vehicle. Now get your caliper bracket lined up here. Put the bolts in and start them on by hand. Make sure they slide on smoothly, or thread on smoothly, I should say. Now you can bottom them out. The torque for these is 125 foot-pounds. Let's put our pads in. You'll notice that all pads will have a wear indicator. That wear indicator will go on the top so that the rotor goes into it and squeals. It's also known as a squealer. When your brake pads get low, start them in at an angle and then twist them. That'll get them to slide in easily. These should pivot nice and freely in here. Now you can take your caliper and put the top slider pin bolt in just so it can stay attached here while you squeeze the caliper pistons in. Now with it here, I'm going to take an 11 millimeter socket, pop this boot off, and open up the bleeder screw. There we go. Mine's a little stiff, I'm gonna work it back and forth. Brake fluid will at this point come out of it. And then I have a dual piston caliper depression tool to push these pistons in. If you don't have something like this, if you have to use pliers, be very, very gentle. Gently squeeze this back until it bottoms out completely. Okay, that's bottomed out all the way. I'm gonna get my tool out of here. And now, now I'm gonna wait for a steady trickle of fluid out of the bleeder screw. I have a steady trickle of fluid coming out of it, so I'm gonna close it off. If you don't wait, you might have uh, air stuck in the system here, so you definitely wanna wait for fluid to come out. Now let's clean this off. You want to get any residual brake fluid off so that you don't confuse it for a potential leak in the future. And if you have this cap, cap it off so debris doesn't get inside the bleeder screw. Now with the caliper ready to slide over the pads, get that bolt through. Now let's snug these up and of course we'll torque them. 26 foot-pounds is the torque for both of these bolts. On the driver's side of your engine compartment, you'll see the brake master cylinder. It's got a yellow cap. Twist it counterclockwise to take it off and use DOT3 brake fluid and top it off to the max line, which should be marked on the side of the reservoir. There we go, right there, actually. Once it's full, cap this off, pump up your brakes, and take it for a road test. Let's get the wheel back on. Start on all five of your lug nuts, bottom them out, and in a cross pattern, torque them to 100 foot-pounds. Double check them. Take it for a road test. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do.
TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.